In this lesson, we'll examine some general strategies to consider when tackling math questions on the GRE. Now, these strategies are based on two important facts. First, GRE math questions are designed to test your number sense and your logic skills. They are not designed to test your ability to carry out lengthy calculations. In other words, the test is not meant to identify and reward the human calculators out there. If anything, the test punishes people who choose to perform more calculations than are necessary. The second fact is that almost all GRE math questions can be solved using more than one approach. Now, these two facts will affect the way we approach math questions. To see how, let's begin with this relatively simple question. Here we see that Golf World sells golf balls for $4.15 each, and we want to find the cost of 480 balls. Now, the approach you learned in school was to multiply $4.15 by 480. But doing this would fall under the heading of performing lengthy calculations. And we know that the GRE is not designed to test our ability to perform lengthy calculations. We also know that most GRE math questions can be solved by using more than one approach. So even though we may be tempted to simply use the on-screen calculator, we should recognize that doing so can still waste precious time. So before we resort to using the clunky on-screen calculator or performing the calculations ourselves, we should look for a different approach. So what are some options here? Well, we might consider performing some estimation, but before we consider doing this, we must always check the answer choices first to see how spread apart the answer choices are. If they're quite spread apart, then we can use estimation. In this question, the answer choices are reasonably spread apart, so we can safely estimate. This means that rather than use the given numbers, we might consider how much it would cost to purchase 500 balls at $4 each. Well, 500 times $4 is $2,000, so our answer is approximately $2,000. Since only one of the five answer choices is even remotely close to $2,000, we know that answer choice C must be the correct answer. So by checking the answer choices first and finding the numbers spread apart, we were able to save ourselves considerable time. Now, what would we do if the answer choices weren't so spread apart? For example, what would be the best course of action if the answer choices were close together like this? Well, if we estimate here, we get an approximate answer of $2,000. But all of the answer choices are very close to $2,000, in which case it's impossible to determine which answer is correct. So we know that if the answer choices are considerably spread apart, then we can save time by estimating. But what if the answer choices are close together? In that case, plan A is to still look for a different approach. And failing that, plan B is to perform the lengthy calculations. The good news is that there's almost always an approach that does not rely on lengthy calculations. Your job is to learn those approaches before test day. Now, in upcoming lesson modules, you'll learn all sorts of time-saving approaches related to a wide variety of topics. All right, let's examine some more questions. Now, in school, you learned that to find 56% of 825, you can either multiply 0.56 by 825, or you can multiply 56 one hundredths by 825. Now, both of these approaches still require somewhat lengthy calculations so there probably exists an easier and faster approach. For example, can we estimate here? Well, before we can estimate, we must first check the answer choices. Since the first four answer choices are so close together, we really can't estimate. So we must either find a different approach or perform the calculations we looked at earlier. Can you see a faster approach here? Well, notice that it's relatively easy to see that 50% of 825 is 412.5. And since we want to find 56% of 825, we know that the correct answer must be greater than 412.5, which means we can eliminate answer choices A, B, and C. Also, since 100% of 825 is 825, we know that the correct answer must be less than 825, which means we can eliminate answer choice E. So we can see that the correct answer here must be D, and we didn't have to perform any lengthy calculations at all. Okay, now let's examine a trickier question. Here we want to find the sum of the numbers from 12 to 53 inclusive. 
Now the long approach is to list all of the numbers and then add them together. But this could take a lot of time. Also, knowing what we know about the test makers, we can be pretty sure that there must exist at least one other approach here. Can you see one? Well, there are several possible approaches here, which we'll examine in future lessons. One option is to add all of the numbers together, but do so in pairs, starting from the outside and working in. For example, we'll add these two numbers first to get 65. Next, we'll add these two numbers to get 65, and we'll add these two numbers to get 65 as well. And in fact, we can see that the correct answer here will be the sum of several 65s and perhaps one different number if there isn't an even number of values in our sum. Now, how many numbers are there in the original sum? In other words, how many numbers are there from 12 to 53 inclusive? Well, in the word problems module, we'll learn that the number of integers from x to y inclusive is equal to y minus x plus 1. So the number of integers from 12 to 53 will be 53 minus 12 plus 1, which equals 42. So if there are 42 numbers from 12 to 53, then we will have 21 pairs of numbers that add to 65. At this point, we can find our answer by multiplying 21 by 65. Or we can answer the question even faster by recognizing that if we did multiply 21 by 65, the units digit of the product would be 5. And since only one answer choice has a units digit of 5, this must be the correct answer. Okay, that's enough for one lesson. Let's summarize. The important takeaways of this lesson are that you typically should not have to perform a lot of lengthy calculations on GRE math questions. And almost all questions can be solved using more than one approach. These two facts should have a significant effect on the way you take the GRE and on the way you prepare for the GRE. So while you're practicing, you should always try to identify at least two approaches to every question. Also, while you're practicing, be sure to review the solutions to every question, even if you answered it correctly. Doing so may suggest an even faster way to solve the question.